Hello everyone and welcome to this morning's webinar for the Forex session. I was waiting for David to start and he was waiting for me to start. So between the two of us, we uh, didn't know what the right hand, uh, what the left hand was doing. So apologies for that. Right, hopefully you can all hear me. I just want to check audio. David, can you hear me okay? Brilliant. I think as if David can hear me, I'm pretty certain that you can hear me as well. Brilliant. Uh, but before we start, may I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen. As you know, uh, trading can be a very risky business, so please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. OK, before we move over to the charts and see what has been happening uh, overnight and what is happening at the moment, very quickly, for those I know we have a lot of people who come for the first time, we will be looking at the charts um, through the prism of what we call volume price analysis. We will look at price action and uh, volume and seeing how the two uh, marry up or not, as it were. In other words, we're looking for anomalies. But VPA is, is much more than that. It is obviously price action and volume, but it's also uh, support and resistance, candles, candle patterns and time. And the support and resistance element of a VPA is something that I particularly want to focus on on my section of uh, this webinar because it follows a, um, a little message that I got on, on Twitter, actually from someone who has uh, read uh, not the complete uh, um, not the forex version of uh, VPA but there is the original book which is a complete guide to volume price analysis but the principles are exactly the same what we also have to look at is what's happening in on the fundamental landscape uh, what news releases there are? There aren't very, actually, aren't very many today. But we always have to go and check. Uh, I, I use Forex Factory, and I also use a, a news feed called Financial Juice, which we uh, we have recommended to our students. And there's both a paid and a free version of that. The free version is is very very slightly delayed. But we also look at what's going on in related markets because um, all all the markets are connected. There's you know there are the relationships between the four capital markets and there's also relationships within the individual markets themselves but in forex there are certain currencies and currency pairs which will reflect what is going on um, in other markets primarily sentiment and you only have to look at uh, your charts this morning to see what has been happening overnight it's very positive news the market is in a good mood what how does that translate into forex well uh, you would expect uh, currencies, com commodity currencies such as the Aussie and the New Zealand to be bought and be bought quite heavily. And that's what they've done. Doesn't always, it doesn't always happen for uh, all sorts of reasons. And um, following on from the book, what we've done is we've actually put together a complete program um, for Forex traders. This is just a breakdown of the content that is available in the program. As you can see, there are five uh, individual modules and all the ancillary modules here underneath. It is a, it is, it was a massive undertaking, but we are so glad uh, that we have done it because it has been, it is very, very successful and successful. We get the pleasure that it has been successful, but much more important to us, it's been successful in the sense that the students, uh, traders who have taken this program, it has transformed their trading and more importantly, their success rate. They are now more confident and not only that, but they are more consistent because they understand what is it, what is it that's driving the market? What, why is the chart doing what it is doing? Um, you know, there's a, um, and as I said, it's got all the other elements that are mentioned in the books, uh, relational analysis, the fundamental analysis. So as I said, we are very, very, David and I are hugely proud of our traders who have taken uh, this program. Now, what we've also done, we kind of completed the circle uh, with the program, which we launched uh, just over two years ago, is now we give our traders, our students, the opportunity to uh, have access to funds uh, at no risk to them. Basically, it allows them, uh, it's just a, what we call the funded Forex program that we've put together. It's uh, it's a number of accounts. They start at 5,000 uh, and go all the way up to 2 million. You basically trade your way up 
to to a million but it's not uh, clearly it's not your money it's just a one-off entry fee that is paid that is it there's nothing else uh, that we ask of you and as I said there's uh, uh, you start at what we call the evaluation stage and at the evaluation stage you have a choice of three different accounts. You can start at 5,000 or you can opt for 10 or you can opt for 15 and um, there are all sorts of um, um, requirements and rules around that. But if you want more information on it, you can find it at quantumtradingeducation.com and um, we launched it last week. We've already got some people on the program and, uh, you know, it'll be very interesting to see how they uh, progress. And uh, we, we really look forward to the day when we can, uh, you know, we can look forward to our first $2 million trading trader. Right. What we've also done as part and parcel of the uh, program and the funding program is we have also developed some very, very particular uh, indicators to help us with uh, uh, to, to help us identify the flows that are going into not only the individual currencies, but the currency pairs. In Forex, you are trading one uh, uh, one economy, if you like, one currency against another. And what these indicators do, they, if you like, they dissemble the Forex market. So we start with the currency strength indicator, which is really a currency flow indicator. We want to know what's being bought at the moment, what has been bought. And because the Forex market of all the markets is, is I think, uh, a true market of mean reversion in the sense that uh, currency pairs or currencies and currency pairs, they they move, they get to a, uh, a point of either overbought or oversold, and then they, they reverse uh, and you get this constant oscillation. It's like a sine wave, much, much more so than all the other markets. For example, in stocks, there is a, there is a degree of mean reversion with stocks, but stocks have a bias to the long side. Because if you think about it, I know you can short stocks in various ways, either short the stock themselves or through the options market. But in reality, do you know of anybody who buys a stock because it's going to go down? No. They don't. They everybody buys stocks because they want them to go up. So it has a, an, if you like, an inbuilt bias to the upside. It doesn't mean the stocks don't uh, fall and go to zero. Um, of course they do. But from a um, um, from the perspective of a, of mean reversion, this market it works beautifully in this way. And these uh, indicators pick that mean reversion up because. As a, as a trader, all traders, but possibly more so in the forex market, you are you really looking at uh, reversals, as I said, from the of, uh, from the mean back uh, the other way, or you are you will be looking to join a trend. Now, because it's a 24-hour market, um, you know you've got to know when to you know when to join. Uh, a, a, perhaps a trend that's already underway or do you wait for a reversal now today is a is a fantastic example because as i said uh, overnight markets are in uh, amazing uh, um, amazingly good mood. I think the Nikkei is up 2.5%. Uh, we've got the US uh, 30 futures are based on the Dow. They're up to 225. The US 500 futures, that's based on the S&P, they're up 22. And even the NASDAQ, uh, not storming ahead as, as it has been uh, until recently, That, but that's up 59. The Dow is up uh, uh, it's, it's kind of leading, it's charging ahead at the moment because uh, there's a kind of rotation out of tech stocks, which you will find in the NASDAQ into what are called more value and, and defensive stocks. But we'll talk about that a little bit more at this afternoon's session. But for, for us as forex traders, we need to know, you know, what is the current market mood because it's going to be reflected in the currencies then a quick look at what's happening on uh, the fundamental side well not an awful lot going on today if you look at forex factory but this is why i suggest you look at financial juice because um, it, it, it will offer you a much more comprehensive calendar. As I said, it has a free version. The calendar is available on the free version. And what do we have? Uh, what we have? Okay, forget the Hong Kong. That's uh, that's uh, if you're tra uh, trading um, any of the exotics. 
Uh, what have we got? Yes, this one here uh, at two o'clock, we've got Lagarde speaking. Um, now, that doesn't appear on Forex Factory. That's actually uh, quite important because it's just before uh, Wall Street opens, but the Forex bit of Wall Street has uh, has already opened. And we've got uh, consumer confidence at three o'clock as well. And we've got a couple of Fed, uh, I think we've got a couple of Fed speakers as well. What have we got? We've got Bullard. No, nope, just got uh, Bullard speaking. Let's have a look. Just move it down a bit further in case I've missed something. And of course, this week, oh, here we are. Yes. And so on and so on. Uh, and we've got another. Um, I've got clear. I knew there was there was more than f one Fed speaker. I hadn't uh, moved the scroller bar lower. So you've got Bullard, Williams, and Clarida. And what we explain in our program and what we said in this in these webinars is um, whenever any um, of the uh, central bank members are you know, come up on your calendar as, uh, you know, commentating or speaking or, or participating in any dis uh, discussion, the first thing you have to go and do is go and check who they are. And more, more importantly, particularly where the, well, all of them, but, but the Fed is concerned, check whether any of these have a, a vote on uh, the committee. If they do have a vote, then the market will certainly pay very close attention to what they're what they're saying, and markets will react um, in um, will react more strongly if, for some reason, one of them goes off script. They don't tend to. They all tend to speak, you know, sing from the same hymn sheet, as they say, as the cliche says. Um, but when they, you know, sometimes they do let things slip uh, intentionally inadvertently, Freudian slip, who knows, but you need to know who's who on uh, the uh, on the various committees and kind of uh, get a feel for how much uh, weight the um, the market pays to their words. And we've got Elaine uh, speaking as well at quarter to six um, the, uh, this evening. And the reason, obviously, with ECB, we've also, uh, if you're a, a pound trader, British pound trader, you've we've got Brexit in the background. Now, what's uh, what's happening here? And on the um, on my iPad version of Financial Juice, I don't seem to have it up at the moment, but um, Financial Juice have put up what they call a market risk summary, which is very useful. And they've got the Trump administration gives the green light for Biden transition. Uh, then they've got uh, German final GDP. And the other big news is that Biden is I think it's pretty much certain he's going to name Yellen, Janet Yellen, to the Treasury, just Treasury Secretary. So the reason why uh, markets are really happy is uh, that piece of news. But also, it's not that, I mean, Trump says he hasn't conceded, but there's an important um, committee in uh, the White House. I think it's called the GSA. They are responsible for the transition from one administration to the other, and apparently they are beginning their work. So put all together, the market has taken that as a huge positive. You know, the uncertainty of the election seems to be, the election result seems to be receding. Um, so everything is um, sort of hunky-dory, despite, so you know, we've got the virus in the background, but, you know, vac it, was mon it was Monday yesterday. So, you know, we definitely needed some vaccine news, which we got from AstraZeneca. So it's putting all these little, little bits and pieces together. And then you look at the indicators, you look at your charts and say, well, you know, what is going on at the moment. Now, I uh, uh, was on cable yesterday and I've looked at cable this morning, but it's uh, going sideways at the moment, although I'm looking to see that possibly there is some, I'm looking for a bit of divergence on there. Because there is uh, nothing going on on cable at the moment for me, let's have a look. And I was going to look at pound yen, but I've chosen cable because it had some really nice lessons on support and resistance yesterday. And I've actually got some screenshots, which I will go through with you uh, later in this session. But I just want to check on cable at the moment and what's happened. Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Yes, it is. We've had the London open. It's kind of sideways looking to move higher, but it's uh, a bit choppy. Let's have a look at my, yes, here we are. Sideways 
certainly not as strong. There have been better moves in other pairs. I mean, the I think the pound New Zealand has had a taking a, a bit of a swan dive. That's because that's been driven by the New Zealand. I mean, we can look at the daily chart and we can see there's a big sell-off in the afternoon, which is quite pertinent to what I was seeing on uh, my charts yesterday. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. But we're certainly on a, in, on a wanting to move higher. But as I said, if you're as a trader, you've got you can either perhaps be like me and some of our other students, and we certainly recommend this when you're starting, is focus on a limited number of pairs. Really get to know them, get to know when they are likely to move, uh, you know, get to know their characteristics, what it is that's going to move them, and stick to them, and really kind of ignore, uh, the, you know, the others, as it were. David, on the other hand, is completely different. He's, you know, he he ha he can he just looks at the 28 and he just picks picks a target, if you like, and away he goes. That's his that's his strength, if you like. It, you know, it's that's his preference and his strength. Me, as I said, I prefer just to focus on. Um, I think I've got about half a dozen that I kind of rotate through. It's a bit like if you're a, a stock, tra a day trading, a day trader with stocks. There are thousands of stocks, and you know you you could get completely lost in five thousand. So you know you can you put your, put yourself together a kind of watch list or preferred stock. Some stocks were you know move at certain times of the year. You've got in earnings, etc. There's all sorts of uh, you know um, criteria. A criteria and it's pretty much the same with uh, with forex you know and fortunately we've only got 28 pairs that we need to look out if um, you weren't here last week what i've actually done this is mt5 but i use it on mt4 as well i've got this now this five chart uh, uh, profile combination for the pair and it works really really well uh, I've got the daily chart for overall context to tell me whether I'm in a trend or whether I'm in a um, in a consolidation I've got the hourly I've got uh, the 10 or the 15 minute chart and these are for my levels these are for my Camarilla levels because I've got different values on the hourly and I've got different values on the time frames below the uh, hourly below the hourly they are um, updated every Every 24 hours the hourly ones are updated once a week and it's quite interesting because I can see here it's actually gone through the R3 and where is it heading for what these levels tell me is where this uh, pair is looking uh, you know looking to move to I've then got a faster time frame I've got the five minute chart here and I've also got my Renko chart the Renko chart gives me the structure of the price action what are what am I facing at the moment on the faster time frames and we can see here we've had this drift higher but we've had an awful lot of uh, you know sort of congestion with with a bias to uh, the upside as I said not not necessarily uh, an easy uh, a move to get into so I'm going to pass over to David because I know he has been looking at pairs that have been moving more strongly as I said and uh, and then we'll come back and we'll look at cable in a little bit more detail. Indeed hello everyone good to have you on board hopefully you can hear me okay just adjust my headset um, sorry I was just fiddling around and I've just literally switched over to uh, the futures workspace uh, for literally just one reason, because we've had this big spike on big volatility candles. You can see this is on the uh, five minute time horizon. So this is on the 6A, the 6B at the top. That's uh, So that's Aussie dollar. This is uh, cable. This is a dollar. Uh, this is CAD dollar, the other way around, the 6C. So in other words, these are all pointing in the same direction, which is why I hopped over here. We've got the 6E which is euro dollar, we've got dollar, uh, yen dollar here, and we've got New Zealand dollar. So they're all pointing the same way. In other words, the dollar is the inverse counter currency on all of these majors. And I just wanted to hop over and have a look at it because we've got this uh, spike on volatility, which has come in literally across the piece. So what we're now expecting to see uh, really in any of these, doesn't matter which one we choose, uh, let's stay away from that one. Let's go to let's go start with the Aussie because that's been um, that's been bullish. Um, it's been going sideways certainly since we uh, got started an hour or so ago. It's it's been in, in a little bit of sideways congestion, but there you can see the volatility trigger. 
massive amount of volume coming in. I mean, this is the the giveaway, if you will, that the 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 the, the market makers are involved in that particular piece of price action. They've jacked it up very rapidly. Uh, what they're looking for is to pull you in on fear of missing out. So the market's moved very rapidly. And all, I've said many times before, what volatility is, is really nothing more than a compression of time. Because that move of, let's just move the chat box out of the way, I can. There we go. Um, that move, which has gone from, where are we? 25 pips, 30 pips, something like that. Um, in a normal day, the Aussie yen might only move, let's say, 100 pips. Sometimes it moves 80 pips in a day. So a move of 30 pips in five minutes is extreme by any stretch of the imagination. And all that's happened is that that price action has been compressed. That would normally take, let's say, I don't know, an hour maybe, that sort of phase of price action, and that's been compressed into five minutes. What happens thereafter is that you see that snap move, you want to jump in, you want to make some quick bucks because you see it fast moving, you've been sat here, you've been sitting here since well, it's six o'clock here, you know, we've been trading around, flip-flopping around, not really going anywhere, and then bang, up it goes, and you want to jump in. And it's it's absolutely the emotional trigger that you will sense. You can't help yourself, but you have to. And what we're waiting for now, if this is going to continue, you can be assured the market makes are in there because look at the volume on it. Uh, absolutely guaranteed. This is not a trap move. They're in there, but they want to get you into an emotional state. Now we're starting to push higher. Be interesting to see what the what the volume is like under that one. Let's hop over onto the spot markets. There we go. And as you can see over on the CSI, this is on. I think this is on five minute. Yeah, this is on five minute. This is the Aussie, which is rising strongly. And that's the dollar. That's the dollar that was falling strongly. So great divergence. That's why you're seeing a strong move developing. We'll go and look at multiple CSIs in a moment. Uh, let's just uh, flick. This is on CAD yen, but let's change this over to uh, Aussie dollar. Flick those over. Now we're on the Aussie dollar. Moving strongly. We had the, the uh, let's just click those open. There we go. We had the volatility here. Let's go up to any one of these. Let's go to the one minute. Volatility trigger. This is the London Open. So it's eight o'clock our time. We're now 8.10. So we're 10 minutes in. We've gone up to the volume point of control. The volume point of control may not have been there. It may have been at a lower level. Probably was, given that we had this very strong um, support and resistance region here on the accumulation distribution indicator. It was probably down here. But the reason it's here now, it's, it's jumped up because we are now building into congestion. We're now starting to see that develop. What we're waiting for is a break away from this region for that move to continue higher. The trend monitor has transitioned into blue. Starting to see that transition over here. Just reload these. There we go. Oops, down onto the daily. Go away. There we go. Reload that again. There we go. So where are we on the daily chart as far, as far as the Aussie dollar is concerned? Just hop that up. And this is all very positive for certainly for longer term trading, because if this candle is going to close this way today, maybe even wider, you can't say at the moment. I mean, it could end up like this. Who knows if we get a reversal in sentiment later on in the session, it could well end up like that. But let's assume that it's going to close in this fashion with a nice widespread up candle with excellent volume underneath. We want to see good, strong volume under here. Then once we're up at this level, the interesting part of this particular phase of price action is we're now moving into this low volume area on the volume point of control. And what that tells us is that the effort required to move through that region, certainly from a volume perspective, is going to be far less than if, for example, we were trying to break through much higher volume as we've got down here. And that is the beauty of the volume point of control histogram and what it reveals to you as a trader. Now, this is the daily, but this could be a one minute, could be a five minute, could be anything. Once you start to move up into these low volume areas, the expectation for the future price action is that it's going to move through there fairly easily. 
because volume is not going to present a barrier in the same way, in exactly the same way as you look at support and resistance through the, the prism of price-based support and resistance. You look at volume in exactly the same way. You look at it through the prism of support and resistance. Have I got a large wedge of volume in the way or am I coming up to some sort of low volume area? It's so important using it in, in that way. The volume point of control itself gives you um, the, the view on where the fulcrum of the market is when the price action is oscillating or indeed also when it's approaching a volume point of control in a different time frame. Don't know where it is on the five minute. Let's go and have a look. Okay, we've broken away from that one as well. Now, at some point when you're trading across multiple time frames, the price action will move towards the volume point of control. And again, it's so powerful because what it will reveal to you is that expect the market to congest at that level. Do not expect the market to, to go through there blindly, ignoring the volume point of control for two reasons. Firstly, because it is the VPOC and has been a, an important uh, level in the past. That's point number one. And point number two is there is a huge amount of volume sitting there by virtue of the fact it is the volume point of control itself. So when you're looking at it on slower time frames, even if you're a scalping trader, if you see the price action coming up to the volume point of control on a slower time frame, that will carry more weight, far more weight than the chart you're on if it's a slower time frame, purely by virtue of the fact that it is a slower time frame. And therefore, by virtue of that fact, it carries more weight. It has to do everything in, in trading. The slower the time frame, the greater the weight it carries. Let's go down to onto the 15 second. Let's see where we are. We had the volatility trigger. We then had a ton of volume coming in. Pretty weak. Market's trying to rally. Now we're trying to see if this is going to continue. But what the trend monitor is saying, the trend monitor is still holding us in. We're trying to break away from the volume point of control. Volume is dropping away here. It's a little bit sluggish at the moment. But you see the trend monitor, how it's transitioned across the time frames. So it's blue here. It's blue on one minute. It's, it's transitioned through from bearish into a darker red didn't go darker blue on that phase but went straight out the other side into bright blue largely because we had this snap move on to our volatility blue down here remaining blue down here and obviously remaining blue on daily so the broad sentiment at the moment is very positive just have a look and see what's going on in terms of the u.s indices there we go this is the three three majors if you like this is the ym that's the dow 30 this is the NQ, that's the NASDAQ, and sorry, I don't know why that's reverted to the DXCM. I was looking at that last night. Uh, just changed that over to the ES. There we go. That's now on the ES. Okay, and we've got the, uh, the S&P 500, and they are all on five minutes. And then down at the bottom here, just change that back to daily. There we go. Let's reload that. There we go. Um, so that's, uh, and down at the bottom here, as I say, we've got the daily. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we're now back on track. From a daily perspective, we're still trading inside the, the band of this volatility trigger, all driven by um, uh, vaccine news and uh, uh, the pandemic, but we're still trading within that particular slice. Uh, elsewhere, it's, it's very sideways at the moment. The market is trying to remain bullish but it's very much congested. And what we're seeing up here on five is, yes, there is bullish sentiment, but it's very much contained around the volume point of control here on all three, which you can see is, is very much in evidence. And hence the reason that at the moment, this is Globex, by the way, we're running electronic, the cash markets are not open, so we're only running one market here. Um, but it's a question of waiting for, certainly in terms of sentiment at any rate, for this particular move to develop further. But for the time being, it's very congested, it's very contained. And that's why when we go back onto the spot markets, certainly in terms of the yen complex at any rate. Um, there we go, it just popped out of the way. You know, the, the buying of the risk currencies, it's, it's not following through very strongly. You can see here, let's, this is on the dollar. I appreciate that. I'll just flick this over onto the yen in a moment. What are we seeing here in terms of volume? We've got a market that's trying to rally. Yeah, it's trying to go higher, but the volume is actually falling away. So we've got a rising market on falling volume. 
It'd be interesting to see if that follows through. But there's certainly weakness here. There's weakness in this one as well. So there is buying, but it's it's being capped at the moment. Let's go over onto one. We are. <clears throat> And again, the similar sort of principle, big surge in volume, volume's falling away. The encouraging uh, aspect, if you're looking to, to hold this position on the um, pretext of a further move higher, is that the volume here is falling away. So we've got a, a, a reversal here, a little reversal here, but the volume is falling. So what that's telling you is that the selling pressure on this particular time frame is diminishing. In other words, if this were heavy selling coming back into the market, the volume here should be rising. It isn't. It's falling, so it's falling away. But then equally so is the up volume. So it's very fragile at the moment. It's not a particularly strong move, but it's certainly enough to, to stay in there for the time being. And what's holding you in there, amongst other things, is obviously the trend monitor, which is remaining blue throughout that top line and is also reverted down here. Now, if we go and head over and have a look at the multiple CSIs, uh, where are we? There we go. That's it. See what's going on here. This is the Aussie. That's the buying of the Aussie. So we're seeing the Aussie move up. This is on one minute, five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, exactly the same way uh, as you use multiple charts, use the currency strength indicator in multiple time frames. It's absolutely essential. So it's moving up very strongly, very strongly overbought, climbing here into overbought, continuing higher into overbought on the 10 minute, into overbought on the 15 minute. To the downside, equally, you can see the strength of that move. You've got the dollar here, which is falling sharply, the red line, falling sharply on five, falling sharply on 10, falling sharply on 15, which is fine. The, the issue on an intraday basis now is these are very strongly overbought. The, the Aussie is very strongly overbought and the dollar is equally strongly oversold. And therefore, for a continuation of that trend, one it has to be cautious because you know these are now at extremes. And if I was looking at this chart right now, what I would be looking at as a reversal trader, out and out reversal trader, would be to take a position, a counter position. In other words, looking for a short now. And what I'm looking for is this to flatten off, which it is on one. I'm looking for a flattening off on five, a flattening off rolling into 10, and then over onto 15. And the same thing with the dollar at the bottom. Once it starts to flatten, same here, rolls over into five and starts to flatten. Uh, and by that time, I'm certainly setting up for a reversal, looking for the opportunity to short that particular currency pair on the expectation of the dollar then rising and the Aussie then falling. The other thing about the, the currency strength indicator, obviously, I always look at extremes. What you're looking for constantly is either extremes. We're looking for many things. You're looking at the extremes, overbought and oversold. Uh, you're looking at the 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 inclination, the angle of climb or the angle of fall of the line, which will tell you about the, the strength of that particular selling or buying in the currency. You're then looking to match those up. But what you're also looking at is currency pairs that are of no interest right now. There's a lot of bunching going on. What you also look at is whether currencies are moving in the same direction. Down here, we've got the, this is the Canadian, we've got the Swiss, we've got the dollar. So any of those related pairs with the yen, the, the CAD, the, the Swiss franc and the US dollar, they're all moving in the same direction. So there is no divergence. In other words, there'll be in congestion. So what we're looking for constantly is we're looking for divergence. We're also always looking for one that's climbing and one that's declining and climbing and declining strongly in both directions because then you've got the power of that revealed in the momentum. So let's hop back onto the charts on the Aussie dollar. It's still climbing, but it's not climbing with huge strength right now, but it's still remaining positive. You can see it here. This is on five. That's the five minute. Yeah, that's the five minute. So the Aussie here is still, is still climbing, but it's very heavily overbought. The dollar equally is very heavily oversold. So there's still some, some momentum left there because if you went out to 15 minute or 30 minute on the CSI, there would be some travel left. And this is what you have to tease apart is what am I trying to do? What time frame am I trying to do this in? How long am I going to hold this position? It's all about focusing on your, your time window. Imagine it as a three lane highway, three lane motorway and, and the, the, 
the trading terminal, the trading window you're sitting in is the middle lane and you have faster moving traffic on one side and slower moving traffic on the other. And it's really exactly the same principle. And it's trying to limit yourself to that particular vision of the market, if you will. Let's go over to currency arrays. Where are we? Oh, can't see it. Must be blind. Where's my currency arrays gone? How strange. Workspace disappeared. Hmm, sorry about that. Let's go and have a look at the currency matrix. How weird. Um, you can see here, this is the backdrop of the Aussie dollar. So you can literally see what's going on in the chart at the same time. That's why it's up here at number at spot one at the moment. If I just isolate out on the dollar, there we go. Because what we want to see is whether that buying or selling of the Aussie and obviously the inverse of that, the selling of the dollar is universal across the piece. So what we want to see in terms of the Aussie, if I isolate out these, let's go up to the five minute. This is what we want to see. We want to see the fact that the, if we're trading the Aussie dollar, the sentiment towards the Aussie right now is universal. In other words, everybody, bar none, is buying the Aussie. And that's reflected in the fact down here, the pound Aussie and the euro Aussie are down here also. So, you know, this is all very, very uh, positive stuff for us trading the Aussie. We're not trading in, in, in the counter direction of everybody else. In other words, we are trading with the flow of the market. This is on dollar CAD. You can see the plunge in the dollar here. Very heavy selling of the dollar right now. If you're in the Aussie dollar, it's great news. That's what's what's helping to drive it higher. That's what the, the currency matrix is telling you. What we want to see, this is, bear in mind, this is one minute. We want to see these joining their brothers and sisters at the top. We want to see the pound Aussie go down here. Some more that's really moving nicely. This one to join this one. Let's have a look on 10 minute. Isolate out on 10. Pretty much a full house there as well. Really nice. Up onto 15. Yep, absolute full house there. You know, this is, and when I say full house, I mean, you've got the four of these at the top and the two of these at the bottom. So there's absolutely no question. It's, it's an unequivocal, clearly uh, defined for you that everybody in the market right now is buying Aussie and they're buying Aussie strongly. But at the same time, they're also selling the dollar quite strongly, too, as you can see over here on the dollar cad. So it's a really nice trade, developing some strength now, developing momentum, keeping you in there. We can see a little bit of a drop off here in the CAD New Zealand. You probably see that reflected over if you hopped over onto the CSI right now. Uh, this is just starting to lift off the, off the bottom here. It doesn't mean that this is going to move all the way across this time horizon, but it just gives you a heads up that there is a slight pause coming into the market because these two have lifted. This is starting to break up a little bit. If it's going to re-engage and be nothing more than a, a pause point, a minor pullback, for example, then what will happen is these will start to shuffle up, these will shuffle down, but then they'll shuffle back up again. And you won't see much of a change on five unless this is going to be a true blown reversal, in which case you will start to see that effect breaking these up. These will start to lift off the bottom. And ultimately that will go through to the 10 and out to the 15. And you can see why it's happening to some extent, because if you look down here at the dollar cad, you can see there's some buying of the dollar coming in now. Whereas that candle was widened down uh, a minute or two ago, it's now starting to develop a, a wick. Bear in mind, this is a 15 minute candle, so you know it's got some way to go. But you can see the buying that's starting to come in on the dollar. And that's what's causing this sort of change now, which we're seeing over here on the one minute chart for the Aussie dollar. But that's the way to use the currency matrix. Again, it's using it in multiple time frames. We keep banging on about it here, but you know that is the core principle, not just for the charts, but also for the indicators themselves. Here we are. Now we're back on, on the time frames again. You can see that beginning to develop. This is on 15 second, bear in mind. This is on one minute. This is on three minute. This is on five minute. This is on 10 minute. And this is over to the daily. And what we'd be looking for uh, potentially is and you can see it here now if you look at this particular candle we've got a widespread All right can anyone hear me now yes, Anna can hear me yes thanks Alan um, I, 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 it's the first time it's ever happened I can only describe it to you um, I was in full flow clearly you lost my uh, sound uh, Anna could not hear me either uh, you couldn't hear her 
Um, we then looked on GoToWebinar and it said start the broadcast, which is bizarre. It's almost as if the broadcast hadn't started. So we restarted it. Um, absolutely no idea. Apologies. Take a deep breath. Uh, take a deep breath. Right, move that out of the way. Here we go. Right. Where were we? Back on the Aussie dollar. Let's just pull that over a bit. There we are. Hopefully you heard up to, we were looking at the currency matrix, which I think uh, was okay. There we go. Uh, and yes, there we are. You can see the, the this is all now broken up. Um, this is still fine, but obviously you wouldn't expect it to, to have any major change, but you will start to see a breakup of this coming now. And you can see it occurring now on the one minute. And if we revert that back to Aussie and change over to dollar, let's see what's going on in terms of the dollar. And what we're looking for is we're seeing some buying coming in here of the dollar. So if we hop over onto the multiple CSIs, currency strength multiples, there we go. Okay, let's hope everything's going to load back up again. Yep. This is the buying. This is, I bear in mind, again, this is one minute. It's very quick. This is the sort of buying that we're now starting to see reflected on that dollar CAD chart on 15. But that's what we were starting to see. And again, it, it demonstrates to you, you have to be very focused on the time frame you're, you're, you're trying to trade because this is snapped up on the one minute, but yet on the five minute, not a great deal of change yet, not a great deal of change on 10, not a great deal of change on 15. And you know that's the key. It is focusing on whatever it is you're trying to do on that particular time frame. Let's just go, oh, let's have a quick look at the majors. Um, right, this is on spot majors. There we go, so we've uh, we've come off the, not on the futures, this is on the majors themselves. So this gives you a straight heads up view on what is going on in terms of the dollar. This is cable, this is dollar CAD. So you expect to see the inverse there. Uh, we've got the Aussie dollar here, which we've been looking at. Let's reload that. Euro dollar, dollar Swiss and New Zealand dollar. And the nice thing about using a, a matrix like this, and you can make them up in any form you like. You can have a yen matrix, dollar matrix, Aussie matrix, whatever. It will always give you, apart from from those where the counter currency is is in it always in the same um, on the same side as in the yen, for example, it will give you this inverse perspective of price action and the associated volume, which is really handy because what you then see is if you're trading, let's say you're trading a cable to the upside, and yet with the dollar and the dollar CAD and the dollar Swiss, you will see the inverse of what is going on. And it's so important because what you're seeing here is you've got a volatility trigger on dollar CAD. Now, it doesn't automatically relate directly to the pair that you might be trading, but it does give you a heads up as to the possibility of congestion in your particular dollar pair or even a full-blown reversal. We haven't got any uh, volatility triggers down here on the dollar Swiss, um, and we haven't got anywhere uh, any uh, elsewhere. But it just gives you that, and when you look at the volume on there, let's just pop that up full size. Lots of volume under that particular candle, nice volatility trigger. What are you expecting from the volatility trigger? Two things, either a full burn reversal or at the very least a congestion phase to develop thereafter. So it, again, it's so important to use not only multiple time frames, to look at the pairs across a matrix, to see what's going on in terms of the currency matrix indicator, the currency array I haven't got up because I've lost the workspace for some bizarre reason. Um, but it, it's always about trying to pull together the various fragments of the market information, whether it's sentiment, you know, I've got, um, Let's have a look. Got the VIX running over here. I won't pull it over. Mm. You're looking constantly. If you if you haven't got the VIX, I've got it on Trading View. Uh, I haven't got Investing.com up there at the moment, but mm. you can find all this information on Investing.com's fantastic site, and there you will find the VIX. You'll find a chart of the VIX as well, amongst many other things. So now what we're looking at is certainly from the uh, perspective of a reversal position. 
I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the volume falling away, I'm looking at weakness coming in, I'm looking at the overbought, oversold state of both those particular currencies, and I'm looking at the opportunity to, to, uh, to short that particular pair and take on a reversal opportunity. The, the payoff is much greater because you're getting in at the start of that particular trend development. If this goes all the way back down to the VPOC, you've got all this to recapture. The downside of reversal trading is twofold. First of all, you have to be patient and wait. So if you're not a particularly patient trader, then this tactic probably won't suit you. Um, but I'm a fisherman and I'm very patient. I'm happy to sit there for long periods and wait for the fish to come along. It's exactly the same principle here. Secondly, you will have to set a much wider stop loss. You cannot expect to reverse trade this by looking at this and going, well, this is this is 50, 60 to 65. So there's five pips. So I'll put a five pip stop loss in. You'll get taken out and you'll get taken out in any uh, pullback reversal higher before it actually does actually move. So you have to lay out more risk on the table. But then in laying more risk on the table, you are going to benefit from a much bigger potential profit because you've got in early to the trend. If you're a trend trader and you're jumping on these trends as, they, as they're as they underway, then uh, you have given up. If this goes all the way back down here, you might be jumping in around here somewhere. You've given up all this uh, uh, 20 pips, whatever it is, 25 pips. That's already history. You can't You can't recapture that. You're just taking a little bit out of the middle here. That's the nature of trading. You put more risk on the table, you should expect a higher reward. You put less risk on, expect a lower reward. But I say, uh, reversal trading, you know, it doesn't suit everyone. It's a tactic that uh, I I love, I favor it, I have to be honest. Uh, I'm always looking out for it. Um, but then I'm prepared to be patient and I'm prepared to put more risk on the table as well. If it doesn't work out, fine, doesn't work out, takes you out of the market, you've lost your start, you've lost, uh, you've lost some money, get on to the next one, simple as that. And just to go back onto what I was saying earlier on about the volume point of control and the power of that is not only will it tell you where this market could go back to, which is very much down to this sort of level where you would expect congestion, what it also reveals to you with this great gap here, because the market shot through there very quickly, when the market comes back down here, you would expect it to move through there with equal speed. So as a short, uh, as a short position, you know, once you get down to 45, then as the price action moves into this region, because it's a low volume area, you would expect that to move through there very rapidly indeed, because there's nothing to cause the market to congest at that point. It's, it's free space, if you will. There's no price-based uh, potential support coming in there, and there's no volume-based support coming into play there either. And that's why when you get down to volume point of control, you expect congestion. You've got the volume point of control. You've got this very strong platform of support here. You've got another one below it. So you've got three reasons there to expect congestion, in addition to which you've got this ton and a half of volume sitting there. So the market is going to sit there irrespective of what else is going on. It's so actually a good, a good time to just pop back over now that uh, everything's sort of settled down. I'm talking uh, very uh, at the beginning, I said, uh, the comment that I'd had on Twitter about uh, chapter seven on the complete guide to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, volume price analysis. He, he basically said that um, it was the first time that he'd looked at support and resistance in a, in, in, it made sense to him basically. And, and, and for those of you who haven't read that chapter in that book and haven't got the book, it talks about support and resistance in the terms of floors and ceilings and also using our, um, uh, using a pivot and this is the pivot indicator that uh, we've uh, um, uh, we've developed. I'm not going to go through the the chapter itself, but there's a really nice example here on the 15 minute chart for cable. And essentially, what you're looking for, you're with in support and resistance, is you you are looking for, as I said, these creation of these floors and ceilings. And given that uh, price action, you know. That's a really nice trend lower, as we can see here, and a lovely waterfall. And then you do actually have a very nice reversal on a two bar reversal. It's like a V-shaped uh, reversal. Uh, it, it, it drifts higher and then it gradually it begins to move into uh, what we call this uh, this congestion phase where the um, the pivots, if you like, start to denote the areas of the of, of the ceiling and also of the floor. And I'm just going to talk about this one here 
in particular this is the uh, this is the congestion it also is where Wyckoff's second law comes in because it's the law of cause and effect because the longer a market is in one of these phases uh, in a very if you like at a tight range a narrow range defined by uh, as I said the uh, the resistance at the top and the support at the bottom when it does break out it will break out in a in a in a very strong and sometimes very explosive way and the longer it stays in this uh, in this type of price action particularly on the on the slower time frame charts you know that any move whether it's to the upside or downside is probably going to it's got a bit of energy behind it because all this in this price piece of price action you're storing up energy if you like and then that is released on the breakout but to get back to the support and resistance now here of also what is also helping me is our Camarilla indicator which is telling me loud and clear that uh, you know this congestion phase here where we have uh, the pivots I've also got fractals as well very clearly marked what is the um, uh, what is the resistance and what is the support but there's also another uh, bit in that chapter about support and resistance is that you can draw lines you could have cam you know i've got the camarilla levels here to draw the lines but you still have to allow you have to be a little bit flexible you know these markets are the price action is dynamic it's a it's it's a living thing if you like it represents you know the emotions of of, of, of millions and millions of traders behind it as it were it's so you know while we have a a ceiling here it will sometimes pop through and then come uh, come back again what's interesting is when you get a, um, a one of these um, uh, phases on a price chart is on this occasion the support flat platform is really strong because it really hasn't been pierced very much as we can see here it's kind of held all the way and then gradually as you can see here it starts to the if you like you get um uh, uh, uh higher um higher lows as, as as and higher highs so you know you begin to look at the the candle patterns the the uh, the shape of the of the of the price action with the resistance side we can see it's had an attempt to break through then it went back into uh the uh, um, uh, the congestion but you look at these phases of price action here. Sometimes they can last a long, long time, and they can also be extremely uh, frustrating. Uh, frustrating here because you've got a lot of uh, uh, you've got that that candle would have been up here, but then it fell back. You've got a lot of volume underneath there, and that that tells you that's not going to go very far uh, because you've got weakness coming in here. You've got a reasonable amount of volume under there, but and you think at each if we ignore what's happening here, if you imagine this as it is developing, we know it's in a congestion because, as I said, I've got the added benefit of having uh, the Camarilla, which is also helping me define this region. But if you didn't, you then you would have to rely on the uh, the shape of the candles, the shape of the of the congestion phase. The it, you've really got to get yourself something like a pivot, or you start you actually draw a line yourself. And once you get sort of one, two, three, you put your line across it and that tells you you know what is the current high in this particular uh, phase of price action so i just wanted to show you that because it, it kind of really explains that comment that was given to me and also uh, is an illustration of what is on chapter seven now when we looked at cable what did i say i said i looked at the hourly chart and it looked it was going to break and it was going to pause at the r4 which is exactly what it has done Again, the importance of having support and key support and resistance levels on multiple time frames. So it's paused at the R4 and explains this little pullback that we've seen at the moment. There's a lot of uh, as volatility, a lot of volatility around at the moment, not surprisingly because of Brexit. We had a sort of retrace into the candle and attempt to move higher, but it stopped. And there's a lot of volume under there. And you think, well, why has that stopped? Well, this is why you have to go to another time frame. You have to look at a higher time frame. And you can see here, it's sort of, that's what's causing uh, this price to uh, uh, to pause and pull back. On the daily chart, we are still actually in an uptrend. I know we had a pullback yesterday, and if you look 
longer term, you have to look to the left of the chart. If we pull this back a bit, where are we? Well, we're reaching a, a, a key level up here. So this is 30, 34 in the 34 AC region. And, you know, even going up to something like the weekly, are we? Is you no? Know, is cable coming to perhaps a major top? Who knows? With uh, with Brexit, uh, you know, constantly in the background. And what do we have here? Well, we can see on the weekly, it's beginning to approach areas on the chart where it has actually reversed. From an intraday perspective, you can say, well, what is the significance? The significance is that you could see a really nice setup on a faster time frame, but because it's now reaching one of these, this key level, it could be, it could be that it possibly it is gonna, it is going to struggle. If you were looking at going long, sort of down here somewhere, you you would have had plenty of, you know, there's plenty of room to the upside before it reached this. As I said, this uh, really looks like an important level for cable and as I said given and then you put that into the context of what is happening in the background and of course we have the background of Brexit do you know is it going to be a deal is it going to be an interim deal is it going to be postponed is it going to be a, a no deal who knows but getting back to the you know the kind of time frames that most traders uh, trade we know why we've got the pause We've got the pause on the five minute uh, chart as well. We're basically going uh, sideways. What is the Renko saying? And the Renko picks it up again. What's interesting about the Renko, because it, it takes away the wicks to the candles and you've got more, um, you can see the structure of the price action much more clearly and in a much more geometric way. What is interesting is we have had the pivots, we've had the pullbacks, but if you notice, if you were to draw a line across there, you are in a kind of congestion. But as I said earlier, it has an upward bias. So, you know, there were there were a number of, uh, you know, possible points in this move where you could uh, either enter or rejoin the, uh, the move. Now, is, is this going to go higher? Yesterday with cable, it paused. Uh, just as we were, as New York was was opening, it looked like it was going to reverse. Then it actually popped higher. In fact, if I have pull up the hourly chart, what have I got here? Let's have a look. This was this is what it looked like. This was the uh, this was the hourly chart for cable yesterday, and we had a this was quite interesting. It went straight up to the R4 on a volatility candle. Looked like it was uh, going to reverse, but actually. If we compare it with actually happened on the hourly yesterday, this is the piece of price action that I captured on my screenshot, as we can see here, up to the R4. It looked like a reverse. I must say, it looked like a you know setting up for a reversal. The SI, the CSI, also the, the pound was very overextended on the CSI, but it it dipped and went on higher, and it did actually. Uh, by the time this is the open, this is the uh, US open, and then we had this move, uh, sharp move lower, which actually corresponds to that wick that we can see here on the daily candle. Right, to return today and to return to uh, the um, uh, this upside move for cable potential, what are we looking for? Well, clearly it's got to clear this level here, which is we know the R4 on the on the hour. Where do we think it's heading? Well, look over to the left. Where is the high over here? What is it? 133.89, 133. Let's round it up to the nearest zero uh, or five, because that is where I bet. I haven't looked at the order flow because I haven't got trade station up at the moment, but I would guarantee any, I, you know, uh, I, I put money on it that wherever there's a zero, wherever there's a five, you are likely to find institutional orders waiting to be triggered or not. Um, we are going to be doing quite a lot about order flow once trade station is launched. The thing about order flow and about institutional levels is this. They are interesting in the sense that institutions may be looking to buy and sell at these particular levels. But you have to remember there's an awful lot of trickery and spoofing go, uh, going on. 
you know, just because, you know, it hits that level, 30, maybe is it 3390, 3390, I, you know, it could be a bunch of uh, orders waiting on a, on a sale. Is it necessarily going to happen? Some of them are pulled at the last minute. It's not allowed, but it happens. But zeros and fives, be aware of them. They're always going to attract um, um, you know these, this interest, if you like, because uh, institutional traders, you know, they're lazy. They, you know, when they quote, when they're giving a quote, they use a five and a zero because it's easy and straightforward. So if this is going to go higher, it's got to break through here. Support, price-based support based on the Camarilla, uh, or it can reverse and where will it reverse down to well you look down the other direction on the faster time frame well it's certainly you've now got the volatility candle here on the 15 minute chart of itself gives you support and in key important support and resistance levels but that little little explosive move occurred from this uh, uh from this congestion and as i said it was more of a drift higher out of congestion it wasn't a sort of an explosive move the explosive move came here off the r3 right uh what is the csi showing csi is actually showing the the pound rolling over slightly let's have a look on multiple csis let's have a look see what's happening well on the hour it's still showing that it uh, wants to uh, move higher. The dollar is still moving lower. What have we here? This is on the 30. Where are we here? This is on the, as I said, on the faster time frames. And this is what you have to also, uh, I'm going to do a little screenshot actually, because I talked about the mean reversion oscillations and it's easier to see it on a, on a graphic where basically you on one time frame on a slower time frame, you have, uh, you know, the, the a price sort of moving up like this on a big, I'm going to draw it like that, and on a faster one, underneath it, it'll be doing that. That's it. So, you know, at some point, the cycles will coincide. Let's call them price cycles. They will coincide. And at other points, they will diverge. Now, as a trader, depends on your time frame. Are you on the one that is looping like that on the slower time frame, in which case you will ignore all the little uh, oscillations on the faster time frame, or you could, if you're a scalping trader, you'd be aware that the price on the slower time frame is looping up and down like this, and you will be looking to take the oscillations on the, on the very fast time frame. You don't really care as long as you can catch the ones going down and up and down, up and down. It really just depends on uh, your style of trading. Right, I'm going to pass back to David. I'm going to say uh, goodbye, and we will be back later on this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed what we have uh, covered this morning. We will be back next Tuesday, David. Yes. Yeah. Or this afternoon, where we'll be looking at the US markets in more detail. Hopefully, you can hear, see my screen and also hear me. Uh, Anna's just going to check. There we go. Very quickly, just to wrap up, because it's gone way over time. This is what the uh, uh, sentiment, if you like, the US uh, indices are doing at the moment. Flip-flopping around, the NQ is looking a bit fragile. Uh, YM is trying to rally, ES is trying to rally. So it's a little bit mixed, but you can see we're trading around the volume point of control here. It's not rampaging higher, but then equally, nor is it rampaging lower at the moment. And hence the reason that, uh, let's just have a final check on where we are with the Aussie dollar. There we go. And this is why you have to be patient reversal trading because um, you know we've got a washing line going on here, flip flopping around here, flip flopping around here. You know, very much contained here, moved into weakness here. We've just got to wait and be patient. We've just got to wait for this dollar to start to lift and the Aussie start to fall. Just seeing very very minor um, effort to do that at the moment. But again, as I say, you've got to be patient. You've got to set much much wider stop losses to reversal trade. Very quickly, just to point you in the direction of everything, quantum trading education, that's where you will find both the education program, but also the funded Forex program. And as Anna said, you start with an evaluation level of 5,000, 10,000 or 15,000. It's your choice. 
you decide where you want to start. The only difference is that your starting level will add, I think it's another level um, before you can get to the 2 million. So it's slightly, uh, you have slightly more levels to get through uh, the lower you start. Uh, once you've uh, passed through the evaluation stage, as I say, it's five, ten, or fifteen thousand dollars. Then we multiply those by four, so you then go up to twenty, forty, or sixty thousand dollars in your funded account. And the very the, the structure of the program is very, very simple. At each level, you have a, a, a dollar-based target to achieve. Once you've achieved that target, you move on to the next phase, and so on and so forth. The only level that has a time element attached to it is the first level, the evaluation stage. We give you twelve months to to evaluate. Uh, you're evaluating us, we are evaluating you, you're looking for consistency. Once you've found that, then you know the world is your oyster because then it's just a question of trading larger sums, which is really what this program is about. If you have the consistency on a 5, 10 or 15k account, you've cracked it because then all you do is just replicate that with ever larger sums of money. And that's the whole essence of the program. And the reason we've put it in place is to give you as a student of the education program the opportunity to leverage your knowledge. It's as simple as that. It is only open to students on the program. Sorry about that. You won't find it elsewhere. You'll find details of it here, but you will not find all the details in, in to a great extent, nor indeed the pay, the, the buy buttons. You have to be a student on the education program. Uh, we decided that ahead of it um, because that's the way we want to keep it. So if you're interested in joining the program, fantastic. If you're an existing customer of Quantum Trading Software and you have some indicators you've already purchased, we give you a full credit for those against upgrading to the education program. So you don't have to buy anything again because the education program includes the full set of indicators. So if you've got one or two or maybe you've got a bundle of something or the other, email the help desk at Quantum Trading Software they will uh, confirm your what credit you can have and then you're perfectly welcome you're more than welcome to upgrade to the education program per se and as i say you get a credit for whatever it is you spent with quantum trading software that's the program it is comprehensive in the extreme there's 450 odd lessons in there there's 250 odd hours of video in there it covers everything you need to go know to give you the confidence to trade forex with complete confidence this is Anna's site, annacooling.com. You'll find all the analysis there, all the books are up on Amazon, both in Kindle and paperback. And finally, the software you'll find over at quantumtrading.com, MT45, NinjaTrader78, and TradingView. TradeStation is coming, I assure you. Been a long haul, but we're doing two platforms at once, essentially, because we're doing 9.5, which is TradeStation and Interactive Brokers, and TradeStation 10, which is the, the conventional TradeStation securities platform. So we're launching two platforms simultaneously. Uh, and that will be done uh, ASAP. There have been a lot of things we've sorted out, but we are pretty much there or thereabouts. Uh, then we're going back onto TradingView, which is very exciting because we're going to port across all the indicators that are missing there. So if you have the full package of TradingView, you will get those issued free of charge, no question. Then we will uplift the price on TradingView to align with the MT45 at $894. So if you, it's a great time to invest in TradingView because you're saving 200 and something odd dollars. You're getting the currency matrix, the currency array, the currency heat map. They will be included in the full package for TradingView. As I say, as soon as they are launched, we will uplift the price to 894. So if you buy now, great time to buy. We're going to run. We've got to take Bertie for a walk. Uh, and then we're going to have a, cup, a second cup of coffee. Enjoy the rest of the trading day. Uh, we will see you later in the US session at 3 o'clock UK time. If not, enjoy the rest of the trading day and the trading week. And we will see you back here next week. So thanks for joining. Thanks for coming along today. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you soon and bye for now.